Okay. Anyway, the origin of all living things has two basic possibilities. Creation by natural forces, alone, without evolving, involving uh, living, uh, natural forces, no intelligence, evolution, design, involving intelligent, intelligent design. While it may not be possible to conclusively prove which produced the biosphere, it may be possible to determine which did not. Leaving the understanding by process of elimination is called eliminative induction, like my co-author has suggested. Only by natural causes alone is advanced by an evolution theory, and origin involving intelligence is advanced by intelligent design theory. <coughs> While time is not a factor in intelligent design, enormous amounts of time are required by the theory of evolution. The recognition of complexity in biological organisms has made long ages even more necessary. Without many millions of years, evolution of the biosphere would not be even considered possible. Long half-life radiometric dating methods have been crucial evidence for evolution theory by the geologic time scale. I will represent, I will present several independent lines of evidence that contradict long life radiometric dates and severely shorten the geologic time scale. Carbon-14 dating of dinosaur bones to around 31,000 years before the present, the survival of soft tissue, soft flexible tissue, even wood, and, uh, that is found in uh, uh, Nova Scotia, and dinosaur bones, the soft tissue there, and the simultaneous formation of multiple strata by deposition and moving water and roughly 0.05 percent of the current geologic time scale uh, as uh, presented in Beijing, China last year, January, uh, June the 15th. Taken together, these indicate that at least from the middle Mesozoic to the present, the alleged millions of years were never there. This renders the evolution of much of the biosphere impossible, eliminating evolution theory as an answer to the question of origins. It may seem that creation and evolving intelligent could never be ruled out because a supernatural being could do anything imaginable. But who the designing intelligence is does not concern intelligent design theory. All it has determined is that there are signs of intelligence in the design of biological creatures. It makes no speculation beyond that. Either signs of intelligent design exist or they do not. Even staunch defenders of evolution, such as Richard Dawkins, acknowledge that the biological creatures exhibit apparent design, but they believe natural forces are sufficient to produce it without involving intelligence. The SETI program searches for signs of intelligence and electromagnetic emissions from beyond the Earth looking for patterns that distinguish intelligent uh, signals from random ones. In the same way, intelligent design theory uses specified complexity and irreducible complexity to identify signs of intelligence in the design of biological creatures. Specified complexity identifies extremely improbable independent patterns that are clearly not random. In living organisms, these components are highly specific, information rich and mutually interdependent, as we all know, working together to perform functions. That is also a hallmark of high tech systems. Irreducible complexity is present where all components of the system must be in place and functional, or it just does not work. On the other hand, people who believe in the origin of life by natural forces have a high bar to cross because no experiment has produced life from chemicals <coughs> and has never been observed. Biochemists have not been able to create a single cell or any simple form of life from raw chemical, raw chemicals. But evolutionary biologists remain hopeful and faithful for a breakthrough someday. Beyond that, evolution theory must explain the invention of every type of cell, organ, body plan, nerve, immune, regulatory, nutritional, waste disposal, motive, sensory, cognitive, signaling, reproductive, and recycling system that ever existed in the biosphere through descent with change by natural forces unguided by a creative intelligence, starting from an imagined primordial cell. If that seems unfair, it's self-imposed. 
The discovery of complexity at molecular level added to the amount of time needed by evolution theory because the invention of novel theory, uh, features such as wings or immune systems and their integration into existing body plans, gene regulatory networks, and functional systems could, would have taken many steps. Each step would require a multitude of random mutations in the right places, in the right sequence, over enormous periods of time. With the presumption that given enough time, anything is possible. The brevity of recorded history has not allowed this to be demonstrated empirically, but it appeals to the <coughs> imagination. If millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of years were not there, evolution of the biosphere would not be possible. The main evidence used to support the idea of deep time is long half-life radiometric dating of igneous rocks. For example, the calculated age of the Earth is 4.54 billion years and the half-life of uranium-238 is 4.47 billion years. So the oldest rocks would have about as much radiogenic lead in them as they do to uranium-238. Radiometric dating of igneous rocks provides a framework of supposed absolute ages for the geologic column, but hardly any sedimentary rocks in the geologic column can be radiometrically dated. Volcanic products are often not near sites being studied, and the circumstances of igneous intrusion can be uncertain. So at specific locations, dated rocks may only bracket approximate time boundaries. Instead, researchers often assume the age of the fossils by their position in the geologic column or the age of strata by the fossils they contain, kind of circular <coughs> thinking that you're always you're familiar with. A creationists argue uh, that ages calculated from long half-life radiometric dating of igneous rocks are erroneous because assuming a closed system is unrealistic, including zircons. Open systems are vulnerable to leaking due to seven factors including exposure to water under high temperature and pressure. And assuming that no data products are present initially is unverifiable. I'll look at two examples. The first is dacite collected in 1986 at the extrusion dome of Mount St. Helens from eruptions that happened between 1980 and 1985. We all remember that one. The whole rock analysis gives an age of 350,000 years. Analysis of separate crystals give, gives ages ranging from 340,000 years for feldspar and 2.8 million years for pyroxene. <coughs> Similar results were obtained from 1954 flows of andesite lava at Mount St. Negaru in New Zealand. I don't know if I pronounced that right or not. Anyway, the dates range between 270,000 and 3.5 million years for, uh, for the andesite. People saw the eruptions. Those radiometric dates are clearly way off, as we all know. The explanation is obvious. The argon-40 in these contemporary rocks is not the result of radioactive decay of potassium-40, which has a half-life of 1.3 billion years. Excess argon is in the crystal. Argon present in the uh, magma, whatever its origin can be trapped in crystals within the liquid melt. These crystals do not dissolve during eruptions and keep the argon trapped in them. But without an alternative way to calculate ages, reliance on radiometric dating continues undiminished. This is fortunate because a short half-life radiometric isotope, carbon-14, has now been used to date the fossils themselves in Cretaceous and Jurassic strata. During the actual, uh, dating the actual fossils is obviously the best way to determine their ages. It's logical. As well as the age of matrix in which they are buried if containing carbon, like clay. Clay contains 1.5% up to 10% carbon. You know that carbon-14 has been used to date fossils of mammals from the last ice age. You may not know that it's also yielded dates in the range of 23,000 to 39,000 years from presentation and conferences proceedings by the American... Oh, but they were blocked from presentation and conferences proceedings by the American Geophysical Union 
in 211 and in early 2012 by the Geologic Society of America in 2011 and 2012, the 2009 North American Paleontological Convention. And then therefore, in August of 2012, we presented our approved abstract. We got one through with seven co-authors in the Biogeoscience section of the AOGS AGU Assembly Conference of 2000 Scientists in Singapore, only to have it removed from the AGOS, AOGS website a few days later. The title was A Comparison of Delta 13 Carbon and PMC Values, that's per cent of modern carbon, values for 10 Cretaceous Jurassic Dinosaur bones from Texas to Alaska USA, China, and Europe. Animals ingest, okay? Animals ingest radioactive carbon-14 by breathing and eating. The carbon-14 in them at the time of death decays to nitrogen, as you're all familiar, with a half-life of 5,730 years. Carbon dating measures the ratio of carbon-14 to stable carbon-12 to get a radiocarbon date. If treatment, if pretreatment could not remove carbon that seeped in after the fossil was buried, this dating system would be useless. But effective techniques have been developed. Radiocarbon dating has been uh, proven reliable with artifacts and organic remains whose age is known historically. Many dinosaur fossils are not petrified. I, I sent samples of dinosaur bones to the University of Georgia to be tested for carbon-14 with the accelerator mass spectrometer in their Center uh, for Applied Isotope Studies. Radiocarbon dating with AMS is reliable to at least 45,000 years before the present. At this facility, it has been reliable to 55,000 years before the present since around uh, 2008. In accord with common practice, information about the types of animals from which the bone samples were taken was not provided to the laboratory personnel to avoid biasing their reports. Testing was done on seven clean bioappetite samples, that bioappetite also contains carbon, two collagen samples, and two charred bone samples. The results are shown in the uh, uh, following slide. 25,000, 23,000, 30,000, 22,000 with plus or minus value. Several other dinosaur bones were also tested for carbon-14 using AMS and Geocon labs in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and at the University of Arizona. These results are shown in the level. Whoops, what's happened here? Did I miss it? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, other labs. Acrocanthosaurus was at the uh, University of uh, Arizona and at the University of Georgia. Triceratops also was at Geocron, and Hadrosaur was at Geocron and University of Georgia. As a coordinator of the paleochronology group, I gather in, uh, private funding to pay for these tests and other projects. They're about 600 bucks a sample. Coordinator Bill White manages our website, and Beatrice Dunkel is our fossil field researcher. Mike Fisher authored the theme of this paper and has been a huge help in press releases and YouTubes. Otis Klein of the Montana Dinosaur Fossil Museum has supplied us with bone samples for cover 14 dating as as Joe Taylor of Mont Blanco Fossil Museum, which he was mentioned in another presentation, he's very, very active. He looks like Santa Claus, anyway. The Allosaurus and Apatosaurus were found in the Upper Jurassic Morrison Formation. Triceratops 1 and 2 and, and Hadrosaur number 2 and 3 were found in the Upper Cretaceous Hell Creek Formation. And Hadrosaur uh, uh, number Okay, both are well-known dinosaur graveyards. The Acrocanthosaurus was found in lower Cretaceous sandstone near the famous Glen Rose uh, strata where fossil human and dinosaur footprints are allegedly uh, excavated. Considering the carbon-14 dates in the range of 23,000 to 39,000 years before the present were obtained for every dinosaur skeleton tested, this is likely to be the case for many others as well. Indeed, we have information that two other creationist organizations have had similar results. Also, a Swedish team included a carbon-14 data 24,600 years before the present in their report on the late Cretaceous mosasaur, that's a marine reptile, that was in 2001 plus one 
journal, online journal. We applaud them for their integrity, may I say courage. They assumed the carbon was for microbes. They had to have some excuse, though none were found. The Mosasar sample was tested at the Lund Pelotron AMS facility of Lund University in Sweden. And all such labs claim that microbes are removed by pretreatment. So what happened to the microbes that they could not find? Their paper reported finding evidence of collagen and structural proteins, or their breakdown products, which supports Mary Schweitzer research. Organic matter decays over time. The question is, how fast? Current limits for how long materials can survive are based upon theoretical kinetics and laboratory experiments designed to simulate protein decay through exposure to harsh conditions such as acid and high temperature and predict complete degradation of measurable biochemicals, biomolecules, at well under a million years. Models of protein degradation at a constant 10 degrees centigrade extend this to a few million years, supposedly. This is an excavation from 19, 2005 in which we saw it open at uh, Otis Klein's facility, uh, two 48-inch uh, femurs, okay? One was a triceratops, the other had a sword. <coughs> All this is interesting uh, because the researchers have recovered what appears to be cells, blood vessels, or tissues from multiple fossils from varying ages and depositional settings and protein sequence data from two dinosaurs. Tests with antibodies confirm that the original and not microbial field, biofilms, as some evolutionists have charged. In fact, flexible fibrous uh, matrix, hollow transport vessels, osteocytes, and intervascular material, often with cell-like morphology, were observed uh, by uh, these researchers in many specimens of different geological ages and recent place, Pleistocene, Pliocene, Miocene, Cretaceous, and Triassic depositional setting. Uh, fluvial sandstone, cave deposits, low siltstone, mudstone, and marine. And taxonomy, such as birds, mammals, Tyrannosaurus, Rex, Hadosaurus, Ceratopsin, Dinosaurus, and Dicnodons, or whatever. <laughs> uh, in 2013, by a speaker of this conference, uh, Mark Arches reported finding soft fibrous uh, tissues in the superorbital horn of a triceratops horridus from the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. Uh, the nice group at uh, the Glendive Dinosaur Fossil Museum again. Very helpful. Under Earth's decline. A 2000 paper by a speaker at this conference, uh, Mark Armitage, refined finding soft fibrous tissue in the suborbital horn of a triceratops. Uh, from Hell Creek Formation in Montana, as I mentioned. Paleo group, carbon-14 dated a cortical bone fragment sent to us by Otis Klein of the Glendine Dinosaur Fossil Museum, which yielded ages of 33,570 plus or minus 120, and 41,000 uh, and 10 plus or minus 220 years for bulk and bioappetite fractions, respectfully. We like to do both. That confirms it. It gives a concordance. In 2013, researchers reported the discovery of embryonic dinosaur bone bed in China from Lower Jurassic, the oldest found so far. They, they estimated the age of these eggs to be 190 to 197 million years. The find includes preserved skeletal elements and eggshells, and is the oldest pres preservation of complex organic remains in a terrestrial vertebrate. They detected organic residues, probably direct products of the decay of complex proteins. A piece of skin from a duck-billed dinosaur was found in late Cretaceous rock in Alberta, Canada in 2013. It was the third three-dimensional dinosaur skin specimen thus found so far. Investigators said they would use the Canadian light source synchrotron to study the skin's components and try to figure out how it had remained intact <coughs> for 70 million years. So join the bandwagon with the Mary Schweitzer how did he determine it, it like how, why it lasted 70 million years. In 2011, researchers reported the survival of organic compounds of supposedly 50 million year old reptile skin from Eocene strata from the Green River Formation in Western America, uh, North America. Paleo group, that's us, carbon-14 dated shale 
from the same formation uh, containing 10.8% carbon content at 45,130 plus or minus 270 years before the present, similar to the youngest coal dated by ICR and presented in the poster session at the AGU convention in San Francisco in 2003. Thank you, ICR. We have also carbon-14 dated a coal sample from Europe, and it yielded 0.204 parts uh, percent of modern carbon-14, or an age of 49,690, plus or minus 640 at the University of Georgia. In 2010, researchers reported finding fossilized mussels, a supposedly 18 million year old salamander from the lower to middle Miocene lake sediments in Spain. The mussel has preserved organically and retained its shape. In 2006, researchers reported a finding uh, bone marrow and approximately 10 million year old frogs. Uh, the bone, oh, this was in Miocene of Libro, Spain. Uh, the bone and marrow preserved in three dimensions as an organic residue, retains its original texture and colors. Osteoclast and vascular structures are also present. In 2012, researchers reported the discovery of an eumelamin, a biological pigment derived uh, from the amino acid tyrosine, found in many organisms in the ink sacs of two Jurassic <coughs> cephalopods presumed to be over 160 million years old. And the ink still was usable on paper. The search for biomolecules and Mesozoic fossils had just started. It was not even contemplated until recently because it did not fit the geological time scale. Professor Mary Schweitzer, who has uh, made uh, the most famous discoveries of soft tissue, dinosaurs so far, said in a 2005 interview, scientists never found the tissue before because they did not look. Conventional wisdom told them that organic materials must decay within 100,000 years and that fossils are merely minerals that filled in spots where animals were buried. Okay. Well, I'd like to make one comment. Well, no one bothered Mary to carbon-14 date dinosaur bones either, and other fossils at AMS labs, including you and Jack Horner. You failed to do that. So, in order to hold to their paradigm, promoters. Uh, proponents of evolution theory must accept that biomolecules can remain intact for as much as 160 million years or more, something they considered ridiculous before it was discovered. They seem to be reluctantly coming to accept the situation while they struggle to explain it. Illustrating the extraordinary adaptability of evolution theory, as our chemist friend mentioned earlier in his lecture tonight. However, with the exception of the Mosasar report, they have not chosen to take the logical next step of testing dinosaur bones for carbon-14. Uh, Jack Horner, an associate of Professor Schweitzer, refused to even, that's uh, Jack on the right there, would uh, refuse to do, to do it even when offered $20,000 by Bob Enyart on the left during a phone conversation and writing and recorded on YouTube. Uh, Bob Enyart is out of De uh, Denver, Colorado. It has a nice, great radio show and good marvelous website. One thing is clear, the survival of biomolecules of soft tissue in Jurassic and Cretaceous dinosaur bones makes sense if they are less than 40,000 years old, as indicated by radiocarbon dating for dinosaur bones. In uniformitarian geology, the principle of superposition states that each layer of sedimentary rock in an undisturbed sequence was laid down after the one below it. But it does not say how much later. In other words, the upper strata is younger than the next strata on down geologic column. Sediments do not accumulate at a constant rate. During a flood, a river may deposit several meters of sand in its channel in just a few days. While in the years between the floods, it will deposit only a few centimeters of sand. Three sets of observations uh, provide a new perspective. Experiments by Guiberto in France that injected crushed sandstone sand and other particles in turbulent water flow produce a series of horizontal laminations simultaneously contrary to the principle of superposition. This has been duplicated by other scientists and has appeared in Nature in 1997. Alex Lolomov et al. in field studies have shown that the strata he studied in Russia 
to have been deposited in 0.05% of the time claimed by evolutionary theory. Second, the fine-grained sedimentary rock shown as shales or mudstones are the most abundant sedimentary rock type. Uh, they contain the bulk of geologic history recorded in sedimentary rocks. Till now, it was thought without experimental evidence that mudstones were deposited mainly in quiet environments uh, that like imagine ancient lake bottom. But experiments in flumes at Indiana University have shown that mudstones actually develop and can be transported and deposited in fast-moving water. Third, mega floods defined as floods moving a mass greater than one million cubic meters per second. As sediments deposited by a mega flood can be 60 feet or more thick. The stacks of strata lay down in pulses as the flood waters accelerate and decelerate. Mega floods have been documented at over 40 locations worldwide. They show the power of moving water to lay down thick stacks of sediment layers over huge areas. On May 18, 1980, an earthquake triggered an avalanche on the north slope of Mount St. Helens. 2.5 million cubic meters of rock and ice lubricated by ice, water, and air slid down the mountain at over 150 miles per hour. It came to rest five miles away. With the north slope gone, there was a steam explosion that flew down the mountainside at 650 miles per hour. Snow and ice melted by the intense heat of the blast descended the mountain at 90 miles per hour, sweeping up soil rocks and trees to form mud flows surrounding the volcano. Thin horizontal varve-like forms, or laminae rather, were formed by thousands in a span of a few hours. Like Iberto learned, and uh, people in, uh, gave a paper in Nature magazine learned. Uh, okay, and sediment moved at moderate speeds, formed inclined strata resulting in cross bedding and thick layers of coarser sediment, large particles on the bottom graded into finer particles above were produced by fast-moving, high-density mud flows and pyroclastic flows. These graded massive beds formed very rapidly by its decreasing energy and internal friction suddenly halted the movement. Ash from the eruption of Mount St. Helens covered 22,000 square miles. As dramatic as that is, the volume of ash produced by the first eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano is to know about was 2,500 time, times larger and covered 55 million square miles. Dinosaurs are buried in geological uh, formations that cover enormous areas such as Morrison Formation, Upper Jurassic Sedimentary Rock, which covers 600,000 square miles of Central North America, the size of Mongolia. The Hell Creek Formation of uh, Cretaceous Sedimentary Rock, where we work, uh, which covers roughly 100,000 square miles of North, uh, Central North America, Horseshoe Canyon, and Milk River formations of the Western Canada Sedimentary Basin that covers 540,000 square miles of southwestern Alberta Providence, Canada. And of course, the last, the Denver Formation and the Denver Basin that covers 85,000 square miles. Uh, a dinosaurs would have to be buried quickly in order to be well preserved. A six to 10 foot wide adult would require at least that much sediment to bury it. Strata covered hundreds of thousands of square miles, standing hundreds of feet thick, containing thousands of bodies of large dinosaurs and small ones, buried quickly before they could decay or be buried from previous inundations, indicate the deposition of moving water on an enormous scale. Experiments have shown that capability of flowing water to deposit multiple strata simultaneously included mudstone, mega floods, provide real life experience. This stands in contrast to the gradual uplift and sinking of land masses over millions of years. Uh, clearly, land masses, uh, rapidly moving waters, are the best way to deposit extensive formation buried dinosaurs. It is true, and I'm almost done here, it is true that examples of organic remains and carbon dated fossils cover only part of the geologic column from the late Jurassic to the present. Much plant and animal life is thought to have evolved before then. Yet these last 160 million years are supposed to include the evolution of dinosaurs. Now forgive me my pronunciation. Yet these last, okay, they include 10 genera of Ankylosauria, 14 of Carnosauria, 14 of Ceratopsia, 3 of Colosauria, uh, 12 of uh, Dinoclosauria, 6 of Ornithosomus, sorry, forget it, 15 of Ornithopods, 5 of Pachycephalosauria, 
four of Sauropodomorpha, four of Stegosaur and Stegosaurus. 73 genera, a genera of Pleistocene megafauna, such as mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, giant beavers, cave lions, dire wolves, and giant sloths. Over 2,000 birds genera, and modern mammals such as elephants, anteaters, uh, rabbits, horses, rhinoceros, bats, pigs, camels, sheep, whales, dolphins, cats, dogs, plus 72 primate genera, including ourselves. The tens of millions of years assigned to the geologic column and the corresponding age of fossils in it are a fundamental requirement uh, for evolution theory, evidence that the multiple uh, strata can be and have been deposited rapidly and simultaneously removes a slow uh, sequential superposition as a guiding principle in the public uh, building of geologic column. The survival of soft tissue and biomolecules in dinosaurs points to burial less than three million years ago, and state-of-the-art testing of many dinosaur bones consistently yields radiocarbon dates from 23,000 to 39,000 years before the present. Evidence for much younger real ages exists. In the question and answer period, I give you the, show you that slide. Taken together, the physical evidence indicates the fossils of Middle Mesozoic and higher standard were buried less than, of course, 40,000 years ago. Now, a host of animals that make their appearance in a fossil record in East strata could not have evolved in such a short time. Without its required long ages, evolution theory can be ruled out as an explanation for the creation of all living things, leaving intelligent design by eliminative induction. I see the ghost is walking, hounding me here. I want to thank you for your attention. I leave you with these two last slides and suggestions for future action on your part. Okay, here's the last two sites. This chimp has been taught in school that he was related to you. He didn't like that. Very unhappy. After learning the truth, he was delighted. <laughs> Did we do any less for our children and grandchildren? I therefore urge that you return to your respective states, that you find a sympathetic state legislature who will, legislator who will initiate a bill that will promote the evidence of abrupt appearance theory, of origins as well as the alleged evidence for evolution from a common ancestor.